Okay, so here's a standard question from chapter 6. And it points out kind of one of the major ideas in chapter 6. So this whole thing that you might have seen on your formula card, they gave you this sigma x equals sigma over the square root of n. And you might have been asking yourself, what the heck does that mean? And how do I know when to use just sigma and when do I use sigma over the square root of n? For instance, when you're coming up with z-scores, right? And you've got x minus mu over sigma. How do you know when to use sigma or when do you use sigma x, i.e. this thing, right? When do you divide by square root of n and when do you not divide by square root of n? Well, the truth of the matter is, you always divide by square root of n. It's just sometimes the square root of n equals 1, i.e. when you're dealing with this case, A. You choose one woman. You choose one thing. Whenever you're choosing one thing and trying to figure out the probability that it's something, you know, what's the probability that her height is less than 65? Choose one person at random. What's the probability that they weigh more than 130 pounds? Or what's the probability that their height is between 65 inches and 67 inches? You know, all those types of questions, they all rely on finding z scores and finding area under the curve. And whether you calculate it with a sigma versus a sigma x is all dependent on how many things you're choosing. If you're choosing one person, you know, the book kind of tells you to just use sigma. If you're choosing more than one thing and then you're asking for the the mean of the whole sample. You see how they're saying what's the probability that the the average, right, the mean height of the entire sample of 50 people, 50 women, is less than 65. Well, and in that case, your n equals 50, and you use this formula. But you really could technically use that formula all the time, because in case a, n equals one. Square root of one is one, and sigma divided by one is just sigma. So really. We just always can think about just using one formula. Rather than trying to memorize two different formulas and when to use it, when not, just always use this one. Right? Always use this one. And sometimes the n just becomes useless because your n is 1. Okay, so <clears throat> part A. If we want to find the probability that a woman is less than 65 inches, we're basically saying there's a point, right, on our distribution that represents a height of 65, and we want to find all of this area below it, right, because we want to find the probability that somebody is less than 65 inches tall. And according to the scenario we're given, the average is 64.2, right, so right here is average bad line, but you get the idea, right Right in the middle there, 64.2, and we have a standard deviation of uh, 3.1, stop it, and uh, <clears throat> if we want to find the area below this, we need to find the z-score, then we need to look that z-score up on the table, and so we go, alright, <coughs> z equals <coughs> the x that we're concerned with, which is 65, right? minus r mu, 54.2, divided by our sigma, 3.1, over square root of our sample size, which in this case is 1, and that whole, right, that whole piece there, and all of this, ends up being useless in this one case because we have a sample size of 1. If you looked at a book example, they would just put in the 3.1, pretend that they were using this one instead of the other one. Okay? So, that would be part A. You can work that out on your calculator. You can get a z-score. Then you can look that up in a table, and that will be the probability below. If we're going to do part, part B, the only difference is now, Z is going to be 
65 minus 61.2 all over 3.1 and this time what's our n? That's right, 50. Again, you'll get a z-score. You'll look that up in the table and that'll give you each one of those will give you a probability. So that's the big difference between those two is when do you divide and when do you don't divide? Well, technically you can always divide. The book is going to tell you that you divide whenever you're looking for characteristics of a sample versus characteristics of a single item. Right? If you're choosing one woman, one house, one whatever, then you just divide by sigma. If you've got multiple things and you take the average and there you have it. But to simplify your life, you can always just use one formula. This one formula is the perfect formula to always use. right? And it's just sometimes your n is equal to 1 and it ends up kind of being a bit of a useless piece. But hopefully that helps.